We started to look at simplifying trig expressions using identities, and we're going to be continuing on in that, but this time using that simplification process to prove these trig identities. And these are a few of my favorite things. I've been looking forward to this unit for so long. So the hills are alive with the sound of trigonometry. So what does it mean to prove an identity? Prove an identity means to show right, that one side of an equation is equal to the other side. And so we do that by simplifying one side of the equation so that it looks like the other one. Right? And you can think about this, you know, you've been doing this your whole life, right? If you've got four plus five equals nine, right, your next step would be to write nine equals nine. I put those four and five together. So we're going to simplify it so that we've got the same trig expression on each side of our equal sign. And we want to start with the more complicated side. And you'll see what I mean by that when we see an example. So we've got the cosecant of theta multiplied by cosine squared plus sine of theta equals cosecant theta. Well, the more complicated side is the side that has more things on it. And that's usually how it goes because it's going to be a lot easier to simplify this side than it's going to be to try to expand this. Because remember, we want to use our trig identities to simplify these equations or expressions to be one thing. This already is one thing, so we don't want to expand it, right? We want to condense. So let's, uh, let's get started here. We're going to start by using one of our reciprocal identities. Right, remember, we always want to look to see if we can use reciprocal or quotient identities first to rewrite our expression. And now because I'm only working right now with this side, I'm just going to leave the equal sign alone, right? We know we're trying to get to cosecant theta. So now let's do this multiplication and rewrite that as cosine squared theta just directly over the sine of theta. And the reason I want to do that is I'm getting ready to combine my fractions, right? Because the next step in our simplifying trig expressions is to either use a Pythagorean identity or to look for a way that we can create one that we can use. And to do that, we're going to need some, uh, some fractions. So if we were to add these two together, right, I'm going to have to multiply this numerator and denominator by sine theta so that we'll have a common denominator. I'm going to kind of gloss over that step since I know you guys know how to get a common denominator and add fractions. So now I have our favorite trig identity in the numerator. And I've got sine in the denominator. Now, what do we know about cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta? It's one. So that leaves us with one over the sine of theta. And guess what? Now we use our reciprocal identity and rewrite that as the cosecant of theta. equals cosecant theta. Bada bing, bada boom. We did it because we are awesome. And my marker's not working. Oh no. I'm going to be really upset if I just lost that whole video.
All right, well, here's some practice for you to do on your own. Hopefully that worked and I don't have to re-record all of this. Um, but if I do, then I will. So more trick for me. But try this one and then we will go over it as a group pretty soon.